You doing all right? You feel okay? Well, the whole thing is hard. Yeah. I mean, because I know he's there. Yeah. His name is Alexi. When when we met him, he was ten months old. Ten months old. Yeah. yeah. He was ten months old. I remember he was holding a little rattle. He was holding it really tight. He's and he had around. this. He was looking around at everything. He was just taking everything in because there were a lot of people in the room, and he was looking at us. And he had this splash of red hair. Uh, and he's just like like Beth said. He's just an angel. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, you don't forget that. You don't forget when you meet him for the first time. The okay. first day we met him, he couldn't sit up on his own. He would sit there and then just fall <laughs> over. Fall and then over. by the last day, he was. we were on the floor, and it was the three of us, and he was sitting in the middle, and he was just sitting up on his own right there. And, and we felt like, wow, we're being parents. You know, we're, we're watching him grow, and we're teaching him things. And, it, and uh, I mean, it's amazing how you just fall in love with these children, and they become your own. And it's it's really a miracle what happens, and we were a fam we we became a family. Mm -hmm. This I bought for her that Christmas. I wanted to keep that for her with the little matryoshka doll. And, and I like to knit. I knit a lot, and so I've knit her this dress and many hats and sweaters and. She has the most beautiful strawberry blonde hair, just a little bit of reddish color to her hair, and beautiful, beautiful blue eyes. The day we left, uh, we, we sat with her, or I held her, her face next to mine. You could feel her drinking in the love. We actually met at work um, yeah. probably, how long now? 14 years ago, maybe? 14 years. We just liked talking to each other and, mm -hmm. and then went for a walk one day and... Beth finally asked me out. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I kind of did ask him out. This is Misha's life book Aww. that we made for him. And that, that was, was his referral, referral picture. Mm -hmm. I love that. And we have his Russian name here and his birth date. And... How much he weighed and how long he was. He was a big boy. Mm -hmm. Beth and I met through our agency. We both are adopting with the same adoption agency. We've become very close friends. We talk on the phone every day, multiple times a day. I probably couldn't have gotten through any of this without her and her support and her friendship. And this is when we first met him. In 2009, my husband and I traveled to St. Petersburg, Russia. We met the most amazing little boy that changed our lives completely. Uh, he was almost four um, when we brought him home. The head of the orphanage said, well, normally what I do is I have the parents meet their new ones in, the, um, in uh, my office, but not Misha. And we said, why not Misha? She goes, well, Misha's a hurricane, and, and we asked, well, is that a good thing? And she said, oh no, in a good way, in a good way. He's just a very active boy, but he will have taken apart half of my office if I leave him in here. We knew that years ago that we wanted two children, and so as soon as we were, were able to start the process again for a second child, we did. Um, that took about six months after he was home, we were able to begin the paperwork um, again for a second child and now we've been in that process three and a half years uh, waiting for this little girl and in November we had the opportunity to go to we were invited by Russia 
by the Ministry of Education to visit um, this little baby. And her name is Irina. And as soon as we laid eyes on her, we knew that our family was complete. One of our first conversations when we were dating um, was, would we ever, would he be, in, uh, would he be interested in adopting? Because I, I thought even if I had a biological child, that, that adoption was definitely something I would be interested in. And this is uh, three years of paperwork, <laughs> it's kind of heavy, that we've been going through um, to adopt our son. Um, it took almost two years to just get a referral to go to Russia, and this was everything that took us to get there, so. Well, uh, Arena's home is very remote from the center of um, the central city. And so we had to travel by two hours on some very rough roads to get up there. And when we, we finally arrived, um, we came in and, and it's this old, very old um, building that looked like something out of a Madeline book. It was very, very surreal. And there was actually a stork's nest on top of the, um, on the, of the orphanage itself. And we were sitting there waiting um, with um, our coordinators and mothers. And you, when you first meet your child, you're, of course, very impatient, not knowing what to expect because all you've seen is a photo that doesn't remotely ever look like the child that you're going to meet. And then she came in, and she was just beautiful. When she first met my husband, she, she started to cry. She was afraid of men and hadn't really been around any men at all in the baby home. It was all women taking care of her. And, and she was afraid of his deep voice. And by the, even the next day, she warmed up and let him hold her. And by the end of the week, they were snuggling and playing and she was laughing with him. So it was really amazing for us to see the change. You go through so many procedures that day. You meet the Ministry of Education and then you fill out paperwork and then you go to the orphanage and you meet the director and you fill out more paperwork. And then you meet the doctor and you go over uh, his forms and then and then you're just sitting there waiting in this little room with your translator and, and then they bring him in and it's, it's you know, it's a miracle. The, the love that you feel and the connection you feel for this little person. Um, and I just remember thinking he looked like an angel. He was so beautiful and sweet. They had instituted a new training requirement for additional training, which was actually very welcomed by us and by all of the families that are in this situation. And then there was additional paperwork that was required. And before we knew it, it was the end of December and the ban had been instituted. I don't even think I could speak for a few hours. I was just sh in shock. Um, I bought different things when we were in Russia, and I bought a music box here and a little cross here. I bought um, in the Orthodox Church for, for Misha and another little one for Arena. I even found um, a pen with her name on it in Russian that I thought I would save for when she's older. Arena is, um, she, she has, um, like most children that are in orphanages, um, she's had, uh, did not, her mother, her biological mother did not have prenatal care. And not having prenatal care results in the children being born with not having fully and fully developed. Um, her heart issue, her heart ailment is such that it is fairly easily correctable, particularly here in the United States. Um, but uh, they weren't going to know specifically what it was be required until she had another examination. It feels different every day. Sometimes there's the sometimes there's the knot in your stomach. Sometimes there's just the the emptiness that's there. Uh, sometimes there's you know frustration, uh, and believe it or not, I mean sometimes there's actually uh, sometimes there's some happiness because you're thinking of him and it makes you smile, uh, but that quickly 
um, that quickly fades when you realize he's not there. Some days when I want to feel close to her, I just come and sit here in her room, rock in this chair, imagine the time that maybe she'll be here with me in my arms. It's just hard to explain. It's, it's, you know, you see other couples who go through something like this. Maybe they have a sick child or a child that's missing or a child that dies. And, and you wonder what that feels like. And I think that's kind of how we feel right now. Because we have Misha, and thank goodness we have Misha, we have just really wrapped ourselves around him. And uh, he has uh, been a blessing. He's really, um, through all this, has been... Um, our strength because we have we have tried as much as we could to uh, keep this pain from him and he has through his joy of an eight year or seven almost eight year old boy you know kept us going we worry about arena um, we hope that she's being well cared for and well loved we don't have a lot of communication, um, really any communication with the, the baby home at this point. And um, because of the law, our agency is not able to have communication um, regarding our adoption. So we don't know what's happening to her. Um, she celebrated her first birthday in February. We missed her birthday. I sent her, I sent her gifts to the baby home, and I hope, I hope those got to her. We're still fighting since January, and, and maybe it's not getting the attention it deserves, but that doesn't mean we've gone away or that we've given up on these children at all. We're still fighting for them every day, every minute. The last day we were in the orphanage, my husband and I told our son that we love him and that we would be back for him and that we would think of him every single day until we saw him again and that we are his mommy and his daddy. And that's the promise that we made. And, and maybe he's a little too young to understand that promise, but that doesn't mean that the promise shouldn't be fulfilled. Last night was not easy. This morning wasn't easy either. So we know we have to leave him for a little while. But I know that he's in very good hands. that we will be back soon to see So, see tight, Alexi. Have a good day today, and I'll be thinking of you always. Bye.